hello it's Rachel here again today I want to talk about the new light well it's not that new anymore it was announced in 2012 about the faithful and discreet slave their identity and uh, their appointments as um, the first appointment feeding the domestics and their second appointment uh, over all the master's belongings um, yeah the subject has come up a little bit lately on YouTube uh, and in the forum, so I thought I'd add my two cents worth, especially so because the, it was this doctrinal change that really was the last straw for me and prompted my exit from the organisation. Um, how that came about is quite interesting because I had been in some discussions with elders in the year previous and had shared some of my Bible questions and concerns with the elders. Anyway, uh, on one meeting, an elder handed me my current uh, kingdom ministry, and he said to me, oh, you'll, you'll find something interesting inside. And I thought, oh, maybe it will be an answer to a question I have or something. So I opened it up, and all there was was an insert that talked about the website jw.org which I hadn't ventured onto at that stage so I thought oh maybe there's something on here that he's trying to direct me to so I went on to the website and there was a video there of the 2012 annual general meeting and this is where they announced this new light on the faithful and discreet slave and I was I was absolutely amazed because only a few days before through my own personal study in the Bible and using only Watchtower literature, including some of the older publications that I'd gone back through, um, I had concluded that what the brothers had said that occurred in 1918 could not possibly have occurred. Uh, mainly their appointment over all the master's belongings. Anyway, to, to see this on... Uh, jw.org that in fact they were now saying that they had not been appointed over all the master's belongings so they had not yet been found to be faithful and discreet in carrying out the responsibilities um, as shepherds and to feed the flock um, I thought wow you know this is a huge um, act of humility on behalf of the governing body and I was I was moved to tears actually I thought yay you know um, you know they're they're making some changes they're they're humbling themselves anyway I I wrote to the governing body and I thanked them for this change and I have um, a copy of the letter I won't read all of it um, but I said it near the beginning that uh, I was writing to them to th personally thank them and that I cried tears of joy at the recent enlightened understanding of Matthew 24, 45 to 47. What profound humility it has taken for you brothers to admit that you have not yet been given authority over all the master's belongings. This is the kind of leadership our organisation desperately needs. Um... And then I went on to talk about something else because the, in the, at the annual general meeting it was very limited information uh, given out about this new understanding and um, I was waiting for the, the Watchtower study articles to come out which we had to wait for the July issue many months later and it wasn't studied till September so almost a full year after they originally uh, announced this doctrinal change, huge doctrinal change. Um, anyway, what I wrote next to them in this letter, I said that for the last few years my conscience has been deeply disturbed by our blanket judgment condemnation of anyone associated with Christendom. I said it, it would be a very dangerous thing to judge those Jehovah has not judged. Jehovah, after all, judges individuals according to their deeds and not organisations. Okay, so I was hoping that with their admission of their not being uh, appointed over all the master's belongings, then they could not um, condemn 
Christendom at that point either if if they had not been judged and found um, worthy of receiving that reward to be kings in heaven and to have charge over all the master's belongings then Christendom couldn't be couldn't be judged at that time I hope I'm making making sense but um, as I found out when the July 15th 2013 watchtower came out no they still hold to the judgment of Christendom saying that uh, all the members of Christendom are weeds considered weeds from 1914 on I think the wording was uh, they have been rejected by Jehovah so it's interesting the the reply that I got to that letter uh, apparently my letter to Brother Splain was forwarded to the writing department for reply. And who knows if he actually read it or not. Somebody read it. Um, it says here... I'll just read little bits. It says, in your letter you mentioned that you were deeply disturbed by what you consider our blanket judgment condemnation of anyone associated with, with Christendom. We regret that you have come to this conclusion. Um, we do not judge individuals. However, the Bible clearly shows Jehovah's judgment of Babylon the Great, which includes Christendom as an organisation. <clears throat> okay, and then it goes on... Well, I'll read the last paragraph. We hope that the foregoing has helped to reassure you that there is no attempt to judge or condemn the members of the churches of Christendom. We leave such judgment to Jehovah. However, um, when that July 15th magazine came out, individuals are in fact judged. It, it used to be that the, the false religious system was judged was, was what they used to say but now in this um, July 15th this one 2013 magazine uh, page 12 uh, paragraph 8 near the end it says and this is from 1914 onwards he Jehovah rejected all false Christians in the congregation and those in the churches of Christendom and if you think the wording is a little bit vague there, like maybe you could think that it's saying the false Christians in the churches rather than all of them. If you look at the 2015 days text for Monday, October the 5th, it said there, he rejected all imitation Christians, including all of those found within the churches of Christendom. So clearly we are talking about individuals here. So that, that letter that they sent me about not judging individuals is just rubbish because uh, this article here and that day's text clearly says that individuals were rejected. You know, all those within the churches of Christendom. Okay, it's quite clear that it's individuals. Okay. Um, this is doing my head in. Um, okay, so there's a few things I want to talk about uh, in connection with this this new understanding. And uh, some of you may who who left the organisation before 2012. Or who just, if, you, if you're if active witnesses and you just haven't kept up with the teachings because they're just too convoluted and confusing. Um, I've made a very crude diagram using a whiteboard of what the, the change in the teaching is. So, <laughs> if you can see this, I hope you can see it, um, you'll see that the old teaching was that in 33 CE, the faithful and discreet slave were appointed by Jesus to feed the domestics. 
but that's considered the first appointment. And the second appointment was in um, 1919, they say, so shortly after 1914. I don't know if I've got that quite in the right place. But they say that the um, faithful and discreet slave was rewarded with, uh, for their faithfulness and given charge over all Jesus' belongings. Okay, and also at that time, Christendom was judged and found to be weeds. And at that same time, you know, Babylon the Great has fallen, is what we were told. Okay, and there's future. So what they've done is they've just moved this one over here, and this one <laughs> where am I? here, and they've moved this over, oh this isn't working too good, over here as well, okay, so so they just moved things along there, but what they haven't moved is that judgment on Christendom, so it doesn't really make sense when you think about it, because let's just say that the future time comes when Jesus comes at the Great Tribulation to reward his faithful and discreet slave, well, what if he finds them unfaithful? Because that, that is a clear possibility. Jesus gave a warning about that in Matthew uh, 24, uh, I think 47, 48. You know, he said if that evil slave should ever, you know, blah, 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 blah. So there is a possibility that they could go wrong. And in fact, that July 13th, 15th watchtower from 2013 actually explains that that is a warning to the faithful and discreet slave. Um, so, let's, so if they become unfaithful, then there's no one else to appoint, is there? Because Christendom has already been rejected and condemned from 1914 on. So there is no one else. So really what the governing body is saying is that it's a foregone conclusion that they will be found faithful. That's pretty presumptuous, isn't it? Anyway, um, I'll leave this part one here and I will continue in part two. I hope I've made sense. It, it's so hard to get my thinking around all of this stuff. Bye.